What is up, Bella Nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, today we're finishing up our talks on the Champion Fighter, and boy, we've had some mixed reactions to this thing, but... We are going to make some builds that are functional and are going to be a lot of fun to use, even with a somewhat bland subclass. And yes, I said builds, plural. Before we jump into that, though, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch the channel are not subscribed, so please help us to reach our goal of 2,000 by the end of this year. If we stay on our current path, we will get there but I need your help so that we do not lose any steam. So of course then, make sure you share the video with your friends and click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. So earlier this week, of course, we did our ranking video on this and I'll put an I card above up there for you to check out. And this thing passed the test, but we said that it's incredibly boring. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing. It means that you can do anything you wanna do with this, but at the same time, there is not a clear direction as to where you should go with this character. And so it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's, it's good for creativity. It's bad for just inherent flavor, right? And just kind of feels like a little bit of extra fighter on the fighter and that's it. There's nothing really special about it. So today we're gonna be doing something that I have not done in a long time and do a double build video where we show you two different ways to possibly do this subclass. Now, this means that I'm going to be moving very quickly through each build, but I think that's okay because of how simple this subclass actually is. So of course, if you have any questions or anything at all, hit me up in the comments down below. I love reading your comments and going through those. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, build number one is going to be a melee build. And the second build, of course, will be a ranged build, so you can do either or with this subclass, which is nice. Um, and I'm gonna give you two different possibilities of how you can do this. This is one thing that's nice about this over the Cavalier, which we talked about last week. Um, that'll be up in the card above as well. The Cavalier is locked into melee only, and so this allows you to do both and be pretty effective with it, although you do have to build quite differently depending on what it is you're going for. So we'll start out with the melee build and we'll talk about the ranged build in just a little bit. For our race, we are actually not going very human or custom lineage for either build today, which is super exciting. Uh, that way you all get to actually use some of the more fun races that are out there and a lot less vanilla. Uh, so what we're gonna do is actually pick up the half orc. And this is a really fun addition. I love the half orc personally. I think it is one of my favorite races out there. Um, let me know what your favorite race is down below. Um, I, I think it's just so fun. We get dark vision, but more importantly, we get things like relentless endurance. Relentless endurance is so nice for something like this if we're up in melee we're gonna be taking hits and we're gonna get knocked down to zero every so often and this allows you to pop right back up and either get out of there or just keep on wailing before you go down again whichever one you want to do I would probably go with the former, but that's totally up to you. And of course, we also get savage attacks, and that is more so what I'm interested in here, which allows us to deal more damage on a crit. And we're, of course, expanding our crit range on this build, and so that is where this is going to come into play a lot in helping our damage. As far as our stats go, of course, we're using our modified standard array as always on the channel. If you use point by regular standard array, rolled stats, whatever your table does, just follow whatever my top three are and focus on those. And then you can usually dump the bottom three and go from there. So your numbers might be a little different from mine, but that's okay. For our plus two and plus one, we're gonna put that in strength and constitution. So we're gonna end up with a 17 strength plus two. We're gonna end up with a 15 constitution plus one. We're gonna get a 13 dex, a 12 wisdom, a 10 charisma, and an eight intelligence. So pretty good start, but there are still several odd numbers that we seek to turn into even numbers in order to get some boosts, and we will do that in the near future. For equipment, I wanted to do something different for this build because it's just fun and the champion is just its own thing. And the biggest thing is that we're crit fishing, right? The best way to crit fish is to make more attacks. And why not use our bonus action to make an attack? So I want to dual wield on this build. All of our light weapons are really underwhelming, so I want to not use two light weapons. 
meaning we're going to go ahead and buy two morning stars for now sheath one until we get a feat that will help us to be able to du dual wield them and then we will be dual wielding uh, morning stars and have an attack on our bonus action which is going to be awesome um, and then of course just pick up some medium armor we're not going for heavy armor on this build um, just pick up some scale mail if you can and eventually work your way up to half plate once you can afford it um, that's that's just going to be our best course of action for this build and um, we're going to have some fun interesting ways of going about this this time around around. Starting off at level one, we're going to be a fighter, which is not that surprising, seeing how it's one of the best starting levels in the game. Uh, but we're going to get a fighting style, and to no one's surprise, we're going to take the two weapon fighting style. This is going to allow us to add our strength modifier to that bonus action attack that we can make once we have a feat that allows us to actually dual wield. For now, we're not going to be actually using this fighting style, which is unfortunate. But I also don't want to wait until level 10 in fighter to get our other fighting style in order to do this. That is a little far, and um, I feel like that's a lot of damage that we're giving up. So I would rather go ahead and just take this now and not use it for a few levels than have to wait until fighter 10 to actually be able to use this. We also get second wind here, which is a nice little bonus action heal when we are not cracking skulls, and that's gonna be really nice, and it's gonna scale decently well with us because we are almost all fighter on this build. At level two, we're gonna get action surge which is going to allow us to have an entire other action which is going to be fantastic and we're going to be able to make great use of that by making more attacks and uh, they will only stack as we go at fighter three we of course pick our subclass and we're going to grab improved critical here as a champion so now we crit twice as often on a 19 or a 20 so that's really good being able to crit more often is nice we don't really have great ways of giving ourselves reliable advantage yet so we're trying to look for that we don't have that bonus action attack yet so we're looking for a way to do that we don't have extra attack yet so there are a lot of things that we're still looking for but we are going to pick those up in pretty quick succession so a lot is going to happen just in the next few levels. At level four, we're a fighter four, and of course, we're going to pick up the dual wielder feat. This is going to allow us to ignore that light property restriction on our offhand weapon, and so now we can dual wield morning stars. This is going to be great because we now have a bonus action attack that we can add our strength modifier to the damage on, and that is one more chance for us to crit, which is fantastic. So we're now making two attacks per turn. At Fighter 5, we get extra attack, and so now we're making three attacks per turn. So a lot happens just in those few levels, and so we've got a lot of chances to crit now, which is really, really good. We don't have a lot to use our bonus action on except for second wind, and that's once per rest. So I'm good with making that extra attack pretty much every turn, and there's not really a reason not to. At level six, we get an ASI or a feat, and I wanted to go with a weird feat that I have not used before on the channel, and that is Orcish Fury. Now, Orcish Fury is a weird one because it is a race-specific feat, and we can only take it as a half-orc, which just works out because that was already a good pick for us anyway. It is a half feat, and so we can go ahead and max out our strength at 20, which feels really good. And on top of that, we get a couple other features. Whenever we hit with an attack, we can choose to add extra damage equal to a roll of the weapon's damage die, which is pretty nice, right? We've got Morning Stars, which are pretty nice, uh, pretty nice weapons to be using. And so, of course, we can add an extra dice to that. Of course, that is only once per rest, which feels really bad. I wish that was proficiency bonus times per day. Um, and I would honestly talk to my DM about getting that changed to proficiency bonus because that once per rest is not great. Um, but that's nice. And of course, you're only going to want to use that on a crit. Uh, that, that just only makes sense to me. And of course, it gives us an extra attack should we have to use our Relentless Endurance. So we're getting more attacks, and when we crit, we're dealing extra damage. That's great. And, and I, I really would talk to your DM about getting that boosted to proficiency bonus times per day, because that just is makes way more sense to me anyway as far as balancing at fighter seven we get remarkable athlete and this is a feature that i kind of slept on in my ranking video earlier this week um one thing i failed to mention was that dex checks that's initiative 
And so this also falls under that. And so you get that bonus there as well. Um, same thing with Jack of all trades, you know, it, it all falls under the same rules, which, which is pretty cool. Um, we mentioned possibly that, uh, that this could work with grappling or unarmed strikes and that sort of thing. So that's an option for you, but overall it's not going to make a huge impact on this build outside of initiative. Um, so don't, don't expect too much out of that one. At fighter eight, we get another ASI or a feat, and we're going to go ahead and take the piercer feat. Now, one really cool thing about this feat is that we can choose to take a plus one in dexterity because we've already maxed out our strength on this build. Um, if you haven't on your build, then feel free to add the plus one there but you're not locked into it has to be an attack using your dexterity, even if that's what you bump up. So that's really nice. Piercer, of course, is going to buff our crits and we're gonna deal extra damage on crits. And that just, that just also feels really, really good. So expanded crit range, our crits are dealing a lot of extra damage. So right now we're just rolling regular attacks unless we're taking a shove action and then attacking advantage that way. So we really need to find a way to attack with advantage reliably. And we do not have that currently. So we are going to look elsewhere and we are going to look for the anger that is inside us and find ways to, uh, to, to make this just a little bit more useful. We're gonna take some Barbarian levels right now because I mean, let's be real. Barbarian is just a no brainer choice for this and it's only gonna help us to be able to crit more and uh, also to be a lot more sturdy as well, which also feels really good as a melee fighter. At level one in Barbarian, we're going to get Rage. And of course, this gives us resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. It is a bonus action, so we're not gonna be making an attack on the same turn as this, but that's okay. Um, it's, it's totally worth it. Plus it's extra damage, which is good. You also get unarmored defense here at level one. And I don't think it's worth taking on this build. Your medium armor is going to end up being just a little bit better in combination with dual wielder and a fighting style we're gonna take later. It's just gonna work out a lot better for you to just stick with what you're doing for right now. Um, it's just gonna feel a lot better in the long run. At Barbarian 2, we get Danger Sense, which is going to help us a lot with our deck saves. As long as you see it coming, you have advantage on deck saves, which is really good, actually. But the main reason we're here is Reckless Attack. Now, Reckless Attack is one of those that I see people say that they love it, and I see people say that they hate it. Personally, I love it. I think it is a fantastic feature. We've talked about Barbarian, and that is up in the icon above right there for you to check out. Um, it's such a good feature to be able to attack with advantage on all three attacks that you're making on your turn, even more if you choose to action surge, and all of them with advantage with an expanded crit range with extra damage coming off of each of those crits. I, I don't know what you want. Yes, you are going to be attacked with advantage, but you are also probably going to be raging, and so you're going to be resisting most of the damage that's going to be coming in. You've got D12 and D10 hit dice, so you've got a decent amount of HP. Uh, there's not really a drawback to doing that. I would I would do this every single time uh, that you possibly can. Definitely reckless attack. At Barbarian 3, this is an interesting choice right now because I almost wanted to go back to fighter at this point. And if you wanted to go back to fighter, I definitely would understand because obviously you would end up getting survivor at level 20. Um, and survivor is nice. Survivor gives you a heal um, every turn until you get back up to half HP if you are below. Um, and once you max out your constitution, it's 10 HP per turn which is nice. Um, and obviously this works outside of initiative as well. So, you know, if you're ever outside of initiative, you're not going to be any lower than half HP, uh, which, which is good. Um, but I would much rather focus on my damage dealing prowess and I can do that much more effectively by taking one more level of barbarian rather than waiting until level 20 just to get survivor. I think I'm going to get a lot more out of this by going this route rather than going the other route. If you want to do it the other way, go for it. But I'm going to go Barbarian 3 and we get our subclass at Barbarian 3. I went through a couple of options, but it really was only ever going to be the Zealot. The Zealot Barbarian is really made for throwing caution to the wind and dealing a bunch of damage. And so you get to deal extra damage with your Divine Fury, which is awesome. Warrior of the Gods makes you easier to bring back to life should you do something stupid, which 
barbarians kind of do sometimes, but that's okay. It's it's making up for that and making your friends hate you just a little bit less, which is always going to be good. At Fighter 9, we get Indomitable, and this is, uh, this is nice, being able to do a lot better on our uh, saving throws. Again, we're not really doing all that much to boost our mental stats, so that is going to be our big weakness. And so this definitely helps us when uh, we're targeted with charm or mind control or anything like that at this level. Um, you've uh, you've got a little bit of, of an ace in your pocket to help deal with that. At Fighter 10, we get an additional fighting style, and I'm just going to take the defense fighting style. There's not really a reason to take anything else at this point. We're going to be up in the fray. We need a decent AC, and this is only going to help us. At Fighter 11, we get extra attack. For the second time, which is just more chances for us to crit. Never a bad thing. At Fighter 12, we get an ASI or a feat, and I'm going to take the tough feat. More HP is never a bad thing, especially on a build like this. So why would we not? I mean, I, I don't see I don't see why we wouldn't take something like this in order to make us more bulky. At Fighter 13, we get our second round of Indomitable, which is good. We get another ASI or feat at Fighter 14. I would go ahead and just boost your, your dexterity up to a 16. Um, yes, our constitution is still only a 16, and it might be more mechanically sound to do it the other way, um, but I'm doing this for a reason. If you're going all the way up to level 20, I would do it this way. If you're stopping at level 15, I would boost constitution. It just depends on where you're stopping in, in your campaign. So we're, we're thinking of, of level 20 in this case. At Fighter 15, we get superior critical. So now we crit on 18s, 19s, and 20s. And this is with attack rolls going with advantage pretty much all the time, which is a really, really good thing. At Fighter 16, we're going to take a normally trash feat and... We're going to use it because I think it is actually really, really fun. Um, we're going to take Medium Armor Master. And Medium Armor Master is one of those that I see dunked on so hard in comments, in forums, in, in everything. But you know what? It kind of works on this build as, as a late game feat. Number one, it allows you to add one more to your decks as far as your armor class goes, which is really good. So normally you are locked into only being able to add two when you have medium armor uh, from your dexterity boost. And so with this, you can now add three. So if you're wearing half plate, that's 15 plus three from your dexterity now, plus one from dueling, plus one from your fighting style. So you've got a 20 AC which is not too bad, to be honest, and that's assuming that you don't have magical armor um, or some other type of, of bonus by now. Um, that's pretty good. I really like that. And we've got a plus six bonus to initiative. That's also really good and, and nothing to scoff at at this point either because we're not a dex-based build. Dex builds are the ones that really do well with the initiative and, and getting that kind of positioning and that sort of thing. A plus six initiative is not bad. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of characters that would kill for a plus six initiative boost, and we've got that, which is really good. And finally, at level twenty, fighter seventeen, we get action surge twice and indomitable three times. For our honorable mentions, we're going to go through these quickly. Um, I would say the Goblin is probably one of your best options because of Fury of the Small being able to go on there and dump more and more damage. Obviously, it's not a dice roll, so it's not uh, extra damage that would be doubled on a crit, but extra damage is extra damage, and so I really, really like that. And the Dwergar actually is not a bad option as well because it gets access to Enlarge Reduce. Now, obviously, we would need to throw out the Barbarian levels in this case just because you can't cast spells when you're raging, but this would be an alternative if you wanted to take 20 levels of Fighter. That would probably be where I would go with that, because that's that's always going to be a nice thing as well. As far as other feats go, the durable feat is not bad. It's a mediocre feat, in my opinion, and I think the ones that we took on this build are much better. But it is an option for keeping you, keeping you in the race as far as uh, hit points go. The alert feat is never a bad option, uh, but it's one that often gets kind of thrown by the wayside, especially on builds like this, uh, but never a bad one. And finally, Sentinel. Sentinel is, of course, going to be great for keeping everyone right where you want them. When they try to run away from you and your a million attacks, you're going to tell them that they can stay right here and take a bunch more. So 
that's always going to be a good thing as well. And finally, for other classes, I didn't really have a whole lot, honestly, because for the melee build, either go all the way in fighter, go like this, or take maybe a couple of levels in War Cleric. War Cleric is interesting because it does give us a bonus action attack. However, it is a little bit limited in, in its uses. And so we would have to do our stat array differently and we would have to spec out a lot of things, um, a lot of things differently. But I think it would actually be a lot of fun to run this with a War Cleric. I'd love to know what you think down below if you think that that would be a good combination. That's all for our melee build. Let's jump over to the ranged one. For our ranged build, I think that this is going to be a lot of fun to do. And let me know in the comments down below which build you like more. Do you like the melee build more or do you like the ranged build more? Do you think it's one is better than the other? I'm interested to see what you think down below. For our race on this one, we are going to go in a different direction, but again, not varying human or custom lineage. We are going to actually go with a half elf on this one. And half elf is a very, very popular race. Um, I did a poll not too long ago asking what races you saw at your table most often. And the biggest answer I got were elves and half elves, which which I kind of figured would, would have been the direction that it would have gone. It just kind of confirms that mechanically they're very sound, but also flavor wise, they're very popular for what they are. And I, I think it's great. Now, of course, for our sub race, we're going to go with the drow. And this is really the crux of what we're doing here. Of course, we are not going to be taking any barbarian levels on this, so we can take spells all day long and we get access to fairy fire and darkness. Now, unfortunately, we are locked into charisma being our spell casting modifier and I don't really want to boost our charisma all that much because it's just not worth it um, but we will we'll do our best to, to make it okay um, don't expect fairy fire to be your best friend on this instead we're going to focus on darkness and we will uh, we'll see what we can do with that here in just a little bit of course we also get things like fey ancestry as well which is also nothing to scoff at and that really helps us out when we are not able to really boost uh when we're not able to boost those mental stats it helps us against that charm which can really put us in a bad situation for our stats, of course, we're doing the same standard array that we did in the last build. We're doing a 17 here and going in our dexterity with a plus two there, a plus one in our constitution with our 15, so 16 total, a 13 in wisdom with our other plus one right there, a 12 in charisma so that we at least have a plus one on that saving throw. It's not gonna make a huge difference at all, so probably don't even use it at all. Um, 10 strength and of course, eight intelligence, so Eh, you know, I, I think having that okay wisdom is going to be nice, and we actually are going to need that for something a little bit later. You'll see here in just a second. For equipment, I would grab a hand crossbow, which again is a weird option for me. Um, grab a shield and some studded leather armor. Now, I want to talk about this really quickly because I've made builds like this in the past and I got comments about it, and so I'm going to go ahead and talk about this really quickly before we jump in. You can wield a shield and have a hand crossbow. Here's how you have to do it though. You can, with a feat that we are going to be getting later, um, so for now, just keep the shield on your back because we actually need to not do this. Um, but we are going to eventually be able to ignore the loading property of this hand crossbow with the obvious crossbow expert. I don't think that's a shocker to anyone out there, so I don't care to say it early. But it is a free action to drop something as you are simply opening your hand but then picking something back up is an interaction and you get one of those per turn. Therefore, because we are ignoring the loading action, we can, as part of the action we are making the attack with, we can load the weapon, attack all in one go, then pick up the shield that we threw on the ground at the beginning of our turn. So have your shield out while everyone's attacking you, drop it, make your attacks so that you have a free hand to load the hand crossbow, then pick the shield back up at the end of your turn. That is something you can do, and it has been confirmed by Jeremy Crawford on Twitter. Uh, I looked for a long time to try to find that tweet and I could not find it, but I have seen it before, it does work. Um, as far as our 
armor goes, studded leather is going to be your best option. We've got a good dexterity score, so having heavy armor does not make any sense on this build at all. So definitely go with that light armor where you get a lot more of a bonus from your dexterity. At fighter one, we get a fighting style, and of course, shocking no one, we're going to take the archery fighting style. This, of course, gives us a plus two to hit on all of our ranged weapon attacks, and that is going to be amazing. We're going to get second wind here as well. Of course, bonus action heal we already talked about that fighter two action surge fighter three improved critical again these are all sounding so familiar from the build we just did uh fighter four crossbow expert right i mean every everyone saw this coming but it's kind of essential right so we can now ignore the loading property if someone is within five feet of us we can just blast them in the face and it's not a disadvantage and we can now make a bonus action attack with that hand crossbow so you may be thinking well dapper why are you not going with a longbow and just using extra attack for that because again we are crit fishing the more attacks that we are making while it is with a lower damage die you're going to end up better off overall by making that extra attack and we need crossbow expert in order to make that work so this is where we're going with this we're still not doing the darkness strats yet so don't be casting darkness on yourself because you're only going to make yourself blind. Uh, it, it, dark vision does not work with the darkness spell, um, but eventually we're going to find a way around it. At fighter five, we are going to, of course, get extra attack. So we're now making three attacks per turn, which feels really, really good. At fighter six, we are going to take an interesting feat, and that is Eldridge Adept. And we are going to pick up an Eldridge Invocation. Everyone knows what we're doing here. We're going with Devil's Sight. Devil's Sight allows you to see in darkness, whether magical or not. That means you can now cast darkness on yourself, and then no one can see you, so you have advantage on all of your attacks. As long as they don't have true sight or any kind of other sense that, that can see through the darkness, then you have advantage on every attack that you make. There we go. We are crit fishing. And this is uh, only going to compound even more later as we go. But for now, we're doing pretty well. We're attacking with advantage and we're just dealing a bunch of damage, which feels really, really good. At level seven, of course, uh, Remarkable Athlete. We already talked about that. At Fighter 8, Elven Accuracy. Yes, you knew it had to come on this build. Of course, we are going to take that in our dexterity, and that's also going to feel really, really good. That's going to not only max out our dexterity, but we now get to roll an extra d20 whenever we make an attack from our darkness. Now, yes, we can only do this once per day, but it's going to feel so good when we do it, right? And and as far as I'm concerned, when I consider something reliable, I consider it something that I can do for an entire combat. Yes, if you get into two, three, four combats a day, this may not be the build for you, but if you're getting in one or two, you're doing this half the time, I, I think that's totally fine, and, and I think that's more than worth it. So at this point, we start to look elsewhere for ways that we can make this build a little bit more effective. Originally, I looked in the place that most people would look, and that is the rogue. Going rogue here, of course, would make a lot of sense in giving us extra sneak attack, um, giving us cunning action. But the thing is that we are already using our bonus action every turn to make an attack. So if I'm having to use my bonus action to dodge, disengage, all of that stuff, then that kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. So I don't need extra stuff to do on my bonus action. You know, if I can just use my bonus action once and sustainably have something that, that I'm getting a benefit from, that seems a little more worth it to me. And so to Ranger, we go. Ranger is a interesting pick for the champion fighter, but I think it makes a lot of sense here, especially with the subclass that we're going to go with in just a second. We do get favored foe here at Ranger one, and this is a completely trash feature. It, it's basically just worse Hunter's Mark, but it's it's worse in every single way, and it's it's just bad. I hate this feature. It's stupid. We do get Canny, though, which Canny is not a dumb feature. Um, basically, half of expertise, which is not a bad thing at all. At Fighter 2, though, we get another fighting style, so we're going to have three fighting styles on this build, which is 
pretty crazy. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pick up the defense fighting style. You could pick up Druidic Warrior if you wanted to, but to me, I think that this makes a lot more sense just to boost our AC just a little bit more. But we also get spell casting, and of course, we're picking up Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark is another bonus action use, but we're going to be dealing extra damage. And of course, all of that is going to get doubled if we are to crit. And that is what's going to feel really good. We use the bonus action one time, and then we are dealing extra damage for a while. And that feels really, really good. As far as other spells that you can pick there, pick your favorites. Um, I, I'm not really interested in many of the other spells. Um, they don't really help me a whole lot. So I would just kind of focus on stuff for outside of combat because our wisdom score is a 14, which isn't great, um, but it's about the best that we're going to be able to do, to be honest. So I, I think it's going to be just fine to leave it how it is right now. At Ranger 3, though, we get to choose our subclass and I think everyone knows where we're going to go with this. It only makes sense to do one option, and that's the Gloom Stalker. The Gloom Stalker, of course, is a super flavorful option, but it's also super powerful at the same time because of the bonuses that you get. Not only do we get a bonus to our initiative equal to our wisdom modifier of two, which isn't much, but combined with Remarkable Athlete, We've got a pretty decent bonus right now, which which is really, really good. Um, and we also get Gloomstalker magic, so we pick up an extra spell. That's fine, whatever. Uh, the biggest thing, though, Dread Ambusher being able to deal extra damage. Again, if we're critting, this is only going to help us. We can cast Darkness preemptively before combat starts because it lasts long enough. As long as you know I'm about to enter a fight, go ahead and cast that darkness. That way you've got your turn to do whatever you want. Um, obviously you can't cast darkness and Hunter's Mark in the same turn. So you do want to make sure that you space those out a little bit. And so if you can pregame on that darkness a little bit, that would be optimal. Um, but I know the situation isn't always gonna do that. And Umbral Sight, of course, is not a bad feature either. We have used this a couple of times on the channel and um, it has never disappointed. We now head back to fighter and we're going to be there the rest of the way because it just doesn't make any sense to go any deeper unless we were just picking up the ASI. But again, then we miss out on our double action surge and our third round of Indomitable. And that's going to be better than pretty much any ASI that I could possibly put on this build. So we're going to go ahead and pick up Indomitable for one use right here at Fighter 9. We're going to get another fighting style at Fighter 10. And I would go for superior technique at this point. And you could go with two options. Number one, and the one that I'm kind of leaning towards is Ambush. Ambush allows you to add your die to your initiative, and this will guarantee that you are going first, giving an extra attack, and dealing extra damage. And so hopefully, during those attacks, when you are blowing all of your stuff, you'll get some crits in there, hopefully, you know, you're hopefully rolling with advantage because hopefully you got your uh, darkness off before the combat started. So that would be really good. Um, yeah, you're going to be dealing a ton of a, a ton of damage. If you don't want to go with ambush, goading attack seems like a better option, possibly even menacing attack for the fear effect. Um, e either of those are going to be really nice alternatives if you're not looking for ambush. At Fighter 11, we get another round of extra attack, always good and really combos well with what we're trying to do here. Um, at Fighter 12, we get another feat and we finally get to take Sharpshooter. Gosh, I hate having to wait this long to take Sharpshooter, but I just didn't have anywhere else to put it. I needed everything else before I could get here. And so that kind of sucks, but it is finally here. And so this is going to take our damage and just send it through the roof because now we have our extra round of extra attack and we've got sharpshooter now on all of those attacks. We're rolling with advantage uh, with an extra die. Like uh, all of the things are, are dying. Everything is dying right now. At fighter 13, we got our second round of indomitable. So that's nice at fighter 14. Now we can take the piercer feet. Um, yes, we've already maxed out our dexterity, but I don't Air, uh, because Piercer, again, is going to boost all of those crits. Um, but again, I didn't have anywhere to put it until now. And so I hate to take it this late, but 
it, it is what it is. Um, at Fighter 15, we get superior critical. So now our crits are going to be happening even more often. I think right now you have a, like a 40 some percent chance at this point to crit, which is nuts. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely insane how often you're gonna be critting at this level. Obviously it's level 18, but you're gonna be dealing so much damage and it's gonna be a 40 some percent chance. I, I like those odds. I like those odds a lot. At Fighter 16, level 19 overall, I would take Resilient. And I don't know if I wanna take Dexterity or Wisdom. Either way, we're not gonna get a stat boost. And so it does feel bad to either end us off on not getting a boost at all or ending us off on an odd number. But the boost to those saving throws is really nice. And if we're going into level 20, you're going to be forced to make those saving throws. Obviously, you do have Indomitable to kind of rely on, but I don't want to necessarily put a crutch on something that I can only use a couple of times. And I'm only going to get a third use of it here at level 20. So I think either one of those is nice. Dex is probably going to be a little bit more often, um, but it, it just really depends on what your DM likes to do. If your DM likes to do more wisdom saves and like try to take over your mind and force you to hit your friends, then you may want to go that route. It, it just kind of depends on uh, on what your DM's pleasure is. At level 20, of course, we are going to be a fighter 17 and we're going to get our second round of action surge and our third round of indomitable. For our honorable mentions on the ranged builds, um, the Shatter Kai was one that actually this build started with, but I realized that it kind of gums up our bonus action a little bit. And so I, I, I took it off and, and I think we're better off with the half elf, um, but it kind of fits the theme of everything, you know, with, with still an elf. So you still get elven accuracy. Um, it fits with the gloom stalker theme. So all, all of that kind of works together. So that's another great option. The bugbear was also a really compelling option here because with remarkable athlete and what we get from Gloomstalker, we're gonna have a really, really fat bonus to initiative. And so going first is going to be pretty reliable. So you're probably gonna be dealing a little bit more damage with the bugbear actually, but you are gonna be critting a little less often, about 10% less often. Um, so I went for more crits rather than, I guess, more potent crits. So it's really up to you which way you want to go on that. Um, but I think bugbear is, perfectly fine and it would also save you a feat slot which is which is also a really nice uh, a nice trade off as well as far as other feats that you could take here, the mobile feat is always gonna be a good option, being able to move around the battlefield a little bit more easily. And Fey Touched. This gives us a little bit more magic that we can use in order to maneuver around the battlefield, to get out of certain situations that we don't want to be in, um, and just ultimately make us more versatile. Now, I did mention other classes that I was looking at, and of course, the Rogue. More specifically, the Scout. The Scout Rogue, of course, would allow us to get out of situations that we do not want to be in. Yes, our AC is fine, but really we don't want to be in melee with people if we don't have to be. Um, obviously we can still fire from melee and be fine because of crossbow expert, but this allows us to get out of those situations and, uh, and make sure that we are really the ones at an advantage at all times. So that is all for today's builds. I hope you guys enjoyed this extended video. Next week is Thanksgiving, so there will not be any videos next week. I hope you guys are looking forward to just spending time with your families. And then we are looking forward to Christmas, which is nuts that it is right around the corner. Um, we will be covering the Echo Night that next week, and we will be back to our regularly scheduled uploading schedule. And so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. So until next time, stay safe out there, stay healthy, have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, I want to know all about it down in the comments below. We're going to have a great time. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.